Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for August 29th, 2022. Well, Jerome Powell kind of upset the apple cart on Friday, reiterating that the FOMC was going to remain hawkish, raising rates until they start to see significant declines in inflation and my goodness that brought in the bears the bears overwhelmed the bulls in a big watershed event on friday um, as the bulls started running for the doors to protect capital so what does that mean for this morning well how about we settle in let's buckle up let's get ready for the monday edition of the morning market prep video Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. Well, certainly we left behind some pretty ugly candles there on Friday, a big drawdown in the market that broke uh, support levels in the chart and really... Um, really just didn't see any relief in the selling pressure um, all the way into the close. And this morning we are looking at a little bit of a gap down here this morning, <clears throat> although we have bounced a little bit off of overnight lows. So this morning when we take a look at this chart, there's a few things that I want to point out. First off, breaking of this support was fairly significant. And as you can see, we continued on down breaking additional levels of support on that Friday close. Now, as we gap down this morning, I want you to notice that we will be coming into a little bit of price support, but real strong price support isn't until we get down here, or shall I say stronger price support isn't until we get down here. Now, looking at that chart, which means that we could have some more downside yet today, I wanna let you know that um, a lot of our indicators are beginning to reach that oversold condition for the short term. And so what I would suggest is that we start to watch for, uh, after this gap down this morning, that potential of a bounce. Not that it will bounce, but the potential of some kind of a bounce. And remember, bounces can be fairly significant in their, um, their move. We could bounce back up and test some resistance levels up here, which would be a several hundred point rally um, in uh, the Dow. So watch carefully for that. Um, the bulls are likely going to fight um, a little bit in here. I would expect some price volatility. I would expect some challenging, challenging um, price action in here with whipsaws and those kind of things um, in the market. But watch some of those levels. Now, the other thing I want to point out is that we did break this trend. That's going to raise quite a few eyebrows here in the market and make it a um, little bit uncomfortable for those folks who just really didn't want to think that the Fed was actually going to hold to their uh, commitment on uh, the FO or on um, in inflation, excuse me. So watch that closely. If we do rally back, watch some of these levels in here. This uh, downtrend area might be a place to watch for a little bit of price resistance as we rally back. Watch some of these price resistance levels up in here or even all the way up in here. And that would be that next potential place that we could see the bears re-engage. Keep in mind, uh, we have now officially begun a downtrend, having, having put in a lower high and now lower lows um, in the market. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY, oh, by the way, I should mention this really quick. Um, if we, there's that weekly chart. That weekly chart definitely left behind a morning star, or excuse me, an evening star pattern. <laughs> And if we look at the daily, notice that this morning we will be testing that daily 50. So that's another one of those reasons why we might catch a bounce. Just a little bit oversold, a little too quickly, and we might catch that bounce here in the market. Let's take a look at the SPY really quickly. SPY doing the same thing. We've got a lower high in here followed by the lower low. That certainly uh, 
tells us that we have some issues here in the market to deal with. Um, we've broken that upside trend substantially and as you can see we slice through some of these support levels in the chart kind of like they weren't even there and um, we are approaching some support down here in this area of the chart and this right in here will be our strongest level of price support on the way down so still a long ways to go before we reach that in the chart once again i want to remind everyone if we look at the weekly in here um, pretty ugly evening star pattern which broke that upside trend um, in um, in our chart you can see we broke that upside trend here that's not a good situation uh, where we pop through and if we look at our moving averages here on the weekly evening star pattern and on the daily we're quickly approaching that 50-day moving average where we could find a little bit of price support um, once again let's take a look at our QQQ very much the same situation, but maybe just a little bit more on the bearish side. And one of the reasons I think that's the case is <clears throat> our bond yields negatively affect um, tech companies. And um, boy, they are getting even more bearish uh, this morning. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. Now, certainly we've broken this uh, trend we uh, failed at the resistance area of that trend and if you notice we're pushing down through price resistance levels in the chart we have another price resistance level down in here that could hold us um, so we'll want to watch that carefully if we were to push on down that low but once again I, I want to suggest the possibility that we could see a bit of a bounce as we approach in the pre-market here we're gapping down to that 50-day moving average so watch that closely remembering however that we have a pretty bearish pattern here on our uh, weekly chart and well, it's just going to take some work to recover some of that now. And then if we take a look at our Russell IWM, also selling off pretty strongly here um, in that chart, breaking down through some support levels, uh, as you can see. Interestingly uh, enough, though, that IWM is still holding above this downtrend break, one of the only indexes to do that. And as you can see, we are maybe maybe that chance we could gain a little bit of support right in here but you'll want to note that the probably the better supports down here a little bit more and that our moving averages here on the weekly certainly a bearish pattern and on the daily we still got a ways to go before we hit that 50-day moving average in the russell so there may be still some downside pressure here in some of those small caps so watch those carefully now if we take a peek at the vix certainly that vix well caused us a little bit of uh problems here in the market that vix popping up uh breaking back through that resistance in the chart is that fear spiked up certainly we have uh, broken that downtrend and we held a higher low here in the chart so that's a little bit problematic here on the side of the VIX showing that fear coming back in. Now, the really big test is going to be whether or not we hold this area up here as support. If we hold this area up here as support, that would be the problem. And then following that trend on that side. So watch that pretty closely. Obviously, the VIX being this high creates that possibility of significant volatility option prices have spiked back up so you want to be kind of careful here on how you approach the market today let's take a look at our t2122 now our t2122 indicator is what gives us the biggest hope that we could be reaching an oversold area in the market but as we were reminded here for a long period of time we can stay overbought for a period of time and we run that possibility that after such an excessive um, um, time up here in that overbought condition that possibility that we could even linger down here a little more now this morning we're gapping down so i expect we're going to be all the way down here in the bottom of the barrel and that's where we watch for that possibility that we could catch a bounce doesn't mean that we have to remember we can linger down here a little bit but let's hope we catch a little bit of bounce relieving some of that extreme selling pressure in the market but i wouldn't rule um i, I wouldn't call that an all clear by any means as a matter of fact i think 
a rally back up, there's probably more downside here in the market because we've got a long ways to go before we resolve this inflation problem. And bonds are telling us that we still have some tremendous problems out there um, as our global economy continues to weaken as well. So watch that closely. And then if we take a look at our T2107, our T2107 did pull back, but the good news here, like I mentioned there on um, IWM, didn't break down um, all that badly. Notice um, we came down in here and held some support. We didn't crack all the way down through there. And at least so far, we're holding above, you know, that downtrend break here on those small caps. So not all hope is lost. We're trying to hang in there. Let's watch some of these levels in here to see if it can hold. With the gap down this morning, I suspect we'll push down into that area, but let's just watch closely. Now our T2108, which was very overextended. Um, it's the, what I kept warning about and warning about. It did create a little bit of damage um, here in that chart breaking down, but you'll notice right in here, we just barely broke in that little uptrend, bre uh, downtrend break right there, just barely. And we do have quite a lot of bit of con you know, congestion in this area that could say that in this oversold, um, situation that we have that we could quickly bounce right back above but watch that carefully if we do bounce up we want to be watching those resistance levels in the chart for that possibility for some more selling since we created that lower high and lower low on the index chart so watch that close now if we take a look at our t2101 now t2101 um had a little bit of a pullback here um as you can see but i you know, yesterday, or shall I say Friday, was a day where we suddenly brought in a whole lot of uh, volume on the sell side. So spiking back up here pretty hard on that volume side. So we may start getting a little bit better data from that T2101. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Now, our economic calendar is really light. Um, this morning um, not much going on here and that's a good thing and it's also a bad thing um, the good part is that there's nothing in here that can create a whole lot of additional bearishness in the market but on the bad side there's not a whole lot in here that could provide inspiration for the bulls either so looking through here we've got some bond auctions and those clearly continue to be a problem so we'll want to watch carefully for that the Dallas Fed manufacturing survey certainly could create a little bit of bearishness those manufacturing numbers have not been good and dallas fed manufacturing last time was horrible so keep an eye on that one but it's not one of those particular notables that really move us a lot and then keep in mind we've got some fed speak out there um, two feet uh 2 p.m as brainerd um, is going to speak on Tuesday, we're going to get some uh, start going into the jobs um, situation here in the market. Um, we're going to have Case Shiller, Consumer Confidence and Job Openings. And you can see we're going to sprinkle in a whole bunch of Fed speak. Uh, I mean, they're going to be out in force um, here now. So watch that carefully. We're going to get our mortgage applications. And then we haven't seen the ADP for a couple of months. They've been recalculating um, how they figure that number. So ADP um, will be coming in here um, um, on Wednesday, Chicago PMI, petroleum status, and then we've got jobless claims, productivity, PM, PMI manufacturing, ISM manufacturing, construction spending, and natural gas report. And then we're going to have that big one of the week. That's that employment situation number here, that government number on Friday. And then, of course, factory orders. So as we move through the week, there are going to be some things to move us around a little bit. And we will ramp up a little bit on some of the earnings. But today, our earnings calendar is pretty lean and pretty limited. Limited. We have probably 30 companies on the calendar, around less than 20 of them are confirmed. And honestly, not much of anything in there that's really notable because it's mostly very tiny, small caps. But I did pull out a couple here, uh, CTLT um, reporting today. Um, you might keep an eye on that, this healthcare 
um, uh, looking pretty ugly here this morning on that move lower. So watch that close. And um, SL QT uh, may be somewhat notable here today. Um, again, not so much. It's a financial service, so that's the only reason it's on there. And um, so many of these reports today are not particularly notable so but we will pick up um, some notables throughout the week just remember that we're diminishing dramatically in the notable reports that will be very market moving um, as we move forward here let's take a look at our um, um, stocks that could be setting up for today but before we do that guys if you could do me that quick favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video and if you find these videos to be useful or helpful if you could please do me that quick favor and that would be click those thumbs up buttons leave that brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow. And I just want to say thank, thanks so much for everyone who does do that. And also thank you to everyone. I haven't been mentioning it all that much here lately, but thank you to everyone who continues to support the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link. You guys are truly off, awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are truly the best. Let's take a look at some stocks setting up. And remember, guys, these aren't recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you're going to need to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful and cautious on these trades, remembering that um, you have to do your own due diligence, making sure that you understand the risks of these trades and never, ever blindly follow someone else's trade idea. Well, I've got to mention um, my position here in CCJ. Now, although CCJ, this was a hard one to hold, and remember, I was holding this based on a weekly and that possibility, that little inverted head and shoulders pattern. And honestly, I got lucky because there was a news report about Japan uh, getting back into the nuclear business, and that really popped us up here in the chart. Now, what I did do is I sold, um, I sold the um, 31 strike um, against this, creating a synthetic cover call position. I have a very nice profit in the position, but I wouldn't rule out the possibility that this may have to pull back or consolidate for a considerable period of time. I have a long-term option on this that, and that of course is covered now, and I'll be watching this area in here of a support. If that can hold, then um, I might even add additional to this trade. So keep an eye on that if it can hold support in that area. And that right at this point, that is a big if. Now you could also look at stocks like URA. You might prefer URA. Same situation could be setting up there. If we could hold that support area in the chart, rest a little bit and then pop back up that would be uh, just what the doctor ordered here and um, another one that you might take a peek at is UUU unfortunately UUU has a bit more of a problem here in the chart if you notice we didn't quite break through that resistance in here so we run that risk um, a little bit more risk on that trade because we weren't able to break through. But watch this support area in here for the same kind of pattern that could set up in UUUU. You might also want to take a look um, at some of these metal stocks. Now, what's interesting is with the dollar being very, very strong, you would expect that these would not be performing at all. But what's interesting in here is we've been seeing commodity prices moving up along with the dollar. Now that's not good for the Fed and that's not good for us as consumers. But if we'll watch these areas in here like Alcoa trying to hold these higher lows, if it can hold in here and hold on to that trend, I would look for that possibility maybe for some more upside. If you take a look at stocks like um, FCX, certainly it got hit pretty hard on Friday and we may lose this support in here um, on that, but we still, whoops, this darn thing changed tools on me. Give me just a second here, guys. Um, we still have that possibility in here that this could hold that trend right in here, rest a little bit and continue up. So keep an eye on some of those metals. They have been coming around and looking pretty good. Let's take a look at some of the um, commodity um, 
or shall I say ag related stocks, um, they finally pulled back a little bit. These things have been shooting up the last few days, shot up last week. And what we want to watch now in this chart is to see if we can hold some price support levels. If you're looking for longs, that is, um, look at maybe some of these. If they hold some of these levels in here, then look for that next opportunity out here where they might engage that trend for the upside. You could look at MOS, um, um, Archer Daniels, um, also showing lots of strength here um, in the chart. Stocks like CF looking quite strong, breaking through resistance. And now any rest or pullback in here, I think sets up that opportunity to the upside. And um, as you know, there's been an awful lot of talk about really big food shortages that likely won't affect the United States all that badly, but it will affect the world, other places pretty dramatically. So keep an eye on those. I'm gonna have to continue to mention uh, things like natural gas. If you look in here on natural gas, guys, um, you got to admit that um, what's been happening here in natural gas has been pretty amazing. And, you know, if you continue to read those stories out there, it's not getting any better for Europe. As a matter of fact, the situation over there could become pretty desperate as winter approaches. So watch that carefully in here, holding some of those support levels in the chart. Natural gas holding up pretty strong. And then we had some pullback in some of these um, energy or oil sector stocks here on Friday, but not so much as to create any major problem here. So let's keep an eye on some of these oil stocks as they rest or pull back. If they can find a level of support in here, then look for that next opportunity. And once again, we continue to see um, our, our uh, issues here in oil and gas energies creating some major problems out there in the world markets. And it would seem that um, probably um, that continues as we head into the weekend. So you'll want to watch that pretty closely. Now, let's take a look at um, that US dollar. UUP in here, representation of the US dollar. Um, Pre-market here, some wild volatility in that. Gapping up and then pulling all the way back. But watch this closely how this opens today. This could actually be a bad tick in the charting system. Watch this closely because as the dollar remains strong and looks like it's going to continue to get stronger when you look at the bonds, that's going to have also some substantial ramifications for other countries out there as they work to be able to buy enough dollars to um, to continue to buy their food and their and their energy um, that's all in dominant dollar denominated um, uh, purchasing so we'll want to watch that closely because if this continues to strengthen that's going to continue to be a problem uh, for other countries and I think it's it's contributing to that whole situation where we're seeing economic conditions weaken around the world. So keep a close eye on that and watch from, for some of those news posts out there about these weakening, weakening economies as that situation continues. Now, please keep in mind, it's not because I believe the dollar is strong. As a matter of fact, we have printed so much of dollars that it is uh, well, I think it's a major problem, and eventually I think we will see the dollar fall pretty sharply. But having said that, we're going to have to watch this closely because as we continue to raise rates and bonds continue to rise, this is going to continue to be problematic for the market. Now, a place where I would be a little bit careful here, guys, is I would be a little bit careful in tech. Um, right now, um, right way options, we have a trade on, we've got a ratio spread trade in here that I closed half of it for 47% on Friday. It will be, uh, I think it was 57% profit in it by the close of Friday. It will be sharply more profitable this morning. And I may close that completely. But the reason I bring that up is we're gonna see a lot of these tech companies um, displaying these lower highs 
um, in the chart and lower lows. So you're going to want to be a little bit careful as they rally back. We'll want to be looking for those resistance levels in the chart and more selling unless we see something major change in these bonds then that could continue to be a substantial problem. So guys, I've run this video long and I wanna apologize for that, but I wanna ask everyone um, or thank everyone for being here this morning. I appreciate you so much being here and I wish, um, wish you a fantastic day. Everyone take care, be safe. We'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning.